time you design a website, you need to make sure your logos are much bigger, your fonts are really big so you can read them from anywhere, and your colors are very bright so you can differentiate different elements on your website. I'm just kidding, but you need to make sure to use a grid system so everything looks like it belongs together. What's going on guys, my name is Leopoldo Perella and if you're new to the channel, I do videos about website design, UX design and the overall design process as well as I share with you my journey as I build my career as a website designer. And in my last video, I spoke about giving all your website elements some room to breathe. And today, I sort of want to take that into consideration but sort of putting everything into a container or actually a 12 column grid that is going to allow you to make all the elements on your website look like they belong together and if you're not familiar with a grid system that's okay it's really just 12 columns that go from left to right or right to left depending on where you're from that you will be using to place all your elements and if you think about it in a canva and we're going to dive right into my computer just now so I can show you more, but if you think about it in a Canva or in an artboard, these 12 columns will go right in the middle. So you are going to be able to create a space for all your elements to belong in one main container if you want to call it. Even if you have different sections, this will allow you to have sort of like a similar pattern throughout your website. Now this doesn't mean that everything needs to belong in it, because just as you make the grid, sometimes as a designer you have to break the grid especially when you are designing probably more more like modern websites or like you know if you're designing for a startup website where they need big screens to be able to show different elements of their products sort of like how stripe has done it you might have to break the grid a little bit and a step outside of these 12 columns but the beauty of it is if you have most of your elements within the grid system once you break it and you put something outside of it it will look just perfect and the reason for it is because our eyes like patterns so they like to see everything in a specific order so if most of your elements let's say 70 percent of your elements are in a specific order fitting between two columns four columns or six columns and then you have one that it's outside of this grid system it will be just fine now the other great thing about using a grid system when you're working on a website or a user interface is that it is going to allow you to go from a desktop version of your website which has 12 columns into something like a tablet that is just eight columns into something like a mobile phone like an, uh, the new iphones for example it will just be four columns this is going to allow you to create a more responsive design for all your the web apps you're creating and the website so now i sort of want to show you how you can get started to use this in adobe xd in Figma which is actually a better way to use a grid system than in Adobe XD and I will show you why and also if you are still designing websites in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop which is just fine it's different tools I'm going to show you how you can get this grid system to work on it and then we're going to dive into the browser so I can show you a plugin that you can download or an extension actually that you can put into Google Chrome so that you can start to see how other websites have been using this grid system so let's dive in now that we're in my computer we're going to get started first with adobe xd and in adobe xd what so you need to do is you need to create a, diff a different artboards for different designs that you are creating so let's say you are creating a desktop version of the app and then you're going to be creating an ipad and a um, one for your mobiles or mobile version um you just go ahead and go over to the artboards you choose the ones that you would need Let's say you're going to be doing the one for the desktop. Um, with Adobe XA, you have the 1920 pixels, which to me is really big. Um, I don't think you need 1920 pixels wide. That's for a really big screen. Um, but what you can do is just after you um, create it, you can go ahead and sort of change it to like, let's say 1440 pixels, which is a bit more like an average screen. Like let's say like a MacBook Pro, or something like that where most people will be using once you have created that um, all you have to do is come here to your layout right now I'm going to disable it but on layout if you click the, um, if you click this you will see that all your grids appear and now if you click control 3 on windows you will zoom into the artboard and you will be able to see that you have 12 columns now the 
other thing that you can do with it, and this depends on your design and depends on how you're working with a developer, but this will really help a developer know exactly how to create a container for your website or the website that he or she has to develop now. And also know the space between elements. So for example, if you want the um, distance between the columns to be less or more, you do that with gods or width and you are able to do that. Let's say you want it a bit more, you give it 20, um, I guess this works sort of like 20 pixels in distance or pattern. If you want the columns width to be a bit more, you can do that as well. I, I would normally just leave them as they are, but you get the point. Now, the other thing that you have to keep in mind when you are designing this and you have to give your design to a developer or if you're doing it yourself, is that the 12 columns work from like, let's say, if you have 12 columns, you have 100% width. If you have um, six columns, you have 50% width. And if you have less, then might be like 20%, 10%, 15%. But so that's sort of how the, a developer who is writing the CSS for your designs will sort of look at your website. The next one we want to go to is Figma and I will tell you why. So in Figma, one of the things that I really like is that one, you can create a desktop um, artboard that is an actual size that people might be using. As you can see here, if you click on artboard, you're going to have desktop, MacBook, MacBook Pro and Surface book and also the iMac, which you might have thought the iMac size might have been bigger than the um, than the MacBook Pro, but for some reason it isn't. But I think starting your desktop design at 1440 pixels wide is a pretty good idea. The next thing that we can do here with um, Figma is if you go over and you click on your artboard and then we look for layout grid, you're gonna click the plus symbol and it's gonna give you this one. But right now we just want the columns right and then we can see that we want 12 columns because that it's the width of the design that or the container that we're going to be working with here you can see that you have width you have margins you have gutter as well but then here's where the magic happens with um figma and you, i don't think you can do this with adobe actually if you can please let me know in the comments below but um the other grid system that you may want to use is something called a baseline grid system and this is just going to be creating sort of like small boxes right through your entire artboard. So in Figma, if we go back to highlighting your artboard and then you go back into the layout grid, you're just going to click it. And now if we zoom in, wrong artboard. And now if we zoom in into the artboard that we're working with, we are going to see that we have our 12 columns, but we also have our baseline grid. And for this grid, I'm going to make a next video because it's very interesting the ways that you can use it. But normally we can put it at 8 pixels. So we're going to sort of be using this now to place elements and to choose a font size and to do all that. But that for another video. So now you've figured out how to use it with Adobe XD and Figma. And the last one. And the last one is for those who are still designing with um, Illustrator or Photoshop. And for that, you can go to a website called 9060.gs and this is sort of like a um, like a grid system that we used before. And once you're here, all you have to do is click download and once you download, it's going to give you all these different file types. So you, you're going to be able to have a column system or a grid system for Adobe um, Illustrator, for Photoshop, for Sketch and pretty much any other software that can design websites. And the last one is all about if you want to see how this works on other websites of, or how other websites have used it before, you can head over to Google Chrome and you're going to download an extension called Bootstrap Grid Overlay. I'm going to put the link below. So you can sort of start to see how this works on other websites. For example, here you can see it on my website. You will see that most of my elements are lined up in the 12 columns that I have chosen for my design. There are certain elements or parts of the websites where you might see some elements float outside of these um, 12 columns but as I said sometimes you do have to break the grid and sometimes you just have to make your own grid system for it to work the way you want it to work. So my question to you guys is are you using the grid system already? Are you combining it with something like a baseline grid system or are you just using your 12 column grids? Let me know in the comments below and if you found this content to give you some value make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button so whenever I post the next video you get a notification and I will see you again in the next video.